Welcome everyone to the uh, Grading Web Dev uh, webinar about grading and auto grading and manually grading web dev inside CodeGrade. And uh, what's really exciting about this webinar is that it's also the first time that we have a teacher showcase. Uh, so as I mentioned before, in the unrecorded part, we are joined today by Johan and Anton from the Melmo University. I hope I pronounce it right, by the way. Um, and they've done some really cool thing inside CodeGrade where they have uh, used Selenium and Jest to auto grade user experience and user interfaces of uh, web dev courses, uh, which is pretty innovative, pretty nice. And later on in this webinar, they'll teach you how they've done that and uh, how that works for them. And also show you how you can replicate that in your own course. Um, so that's pretty cool. Next to that, I'll also be talking about some other things, uh, starting with some basics about how you can manually grade uh, web dev, so HTML, CSS pages inside CodeGrade visually. Uh, after that, I give the floor to Johan and Anton. And after they're done with their segment, I'll quickly touch on auto grading JavaScript in CodeGrade and auto grading databases inside CodeGrade. Um, so that will be the, the today's topic. And uh, I hope we can cover most of the web dev ecosystem and how you can auto grade that inside CodeGrade today. Of course, there's a lot of languages and frameworks and uh, nearly all of them work inside CodeGrade as well. Uh, so we'll keep it pretty, um, pretty general and not go into depth on specific frameworks that much. So let's start with the uh, basics and uh, how you can best set up your basic manually graded uh, web dev assignment. Um, first of all, for your web dev assignment, uh, it's a pretty good idea to turn on Git uploading as well. Um, because these are often ongoing projects as they're a little bit bigger of size. And by turning on Git uploading, you can allow your students to work in their Git directory. And every time they do a Git push or they push to a specific branch, it will automatically be uploaded to CodeGrade and it will make their life a little bit easier, especially if you want them to upload uh, multiple versions or if you want to keep an eye on the multiple versions of their web dev project. Of course, inside CodeGrade, you can also leave the normal uploader turned on and there the students can upload archives. So if they zip everything or put everything in a tar file, they can upload it like that and that will work as well. Um, next to that, grading web dev is really just like grading anything else inside CodeGrade. Um, code files like HTML code, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, SQL. It will all simply work inside CodeGrade and you can write inline comments like you're used to. You can give general feedback over the whole project like you're used to, but you can of course also do some auto grading there. One thing we've added specifically for web dev courses inside CodeGrade is our render viewer. And this works with, for instance, HTML, CSS and JavaScript pages. Uh, and with this render view, you can interact and navigate through a submitted project. Um, it runs JavaScript. It can allow you to submit forms as well. And this is a way for you to manually grade uh, visual projects like web dev pretty easily. Uh, I'll show you how that works right now. Uh, so this is what the render viewer inside CodeGrade looks like. Basically, it's what you uh, know from the code viewer. You have your files on the right. Uh, but instead of seeing the code in the middle, you actually see the rendered version of this file. In this case, I'm rendering index.html where there is a simple contact form where you can fill in your first name, last name, your favorite ad tech, ad tech tool, which coincidentally is code grid right here. Um, and you can send in a message. You can interact with this like, you're, like normal and you can even submit a form like this. If you do this, uh, it can be very useful to select which file you want to load first. Um, since most of the times for web dev courses, that will be index.html, of course. Um, especially if students submit a larger project, it is nice and convenient for you when you're officially grading them uh, that each time you open a new student, automatically you'll open index.html and you can start interacting with the website right away. So how you do that, you go to advanced settings, under the general tab of the assignment management page and you select the file to load first. 
Uh, make sure though here to start with a forward slash. So it is index.html in the root of their submission. As with Git or with a zip archive, students can of course also hand in directory structures. Um, now, of course, in the previous uh, example, I showed you the render viewer with a very simple form, um, but to kind of show you what is possible with the render viewer, what I've done is I've uploaded our very old documentation, which is a pretty big HTML project inside CodeGrade uh, to show you how you can interact with that. Um, so let me open this right here. I have it open right here. Uh, and if you are opening a file which can be rendered, you'll see this screen where you can choose whether you want to render the HTML or you want to show the source so you can give your feedback. Um, there are some options here where you can select where you want to allow JavaScript, allow remote resources, uh, and some other things, for instance, allow forms to be submitted. Uh, so you can play around with the security of this a bit and also what you allow the students to do. Um, so if you click render HTML here, it will render the HTML. One more thing I want to point, point out, since I've set up in this assignment the um, under the advanced options here, the files load first to index.html, I open the assignment and right away I get to index.html. Let me quickly open it again. There we go. Um, so as you can see, when I open it, I get to index.html right away. Let me render this. And as you can see, I now have the old documentation of CodeGrade opened in here. And I can simply click on any of these links and interact with this website like I would normally do. And using this, it is of course very easy for you to play around with the submission of the student and visually inspect whether they meet the requirements of the assignment. Um, now, of course, this is done visually, um, this is done manually, and if you have more students, then that may take too much time. And that is exactly where uh, a solution from Johan and Anton comes in, where you can automate this whole process and automate clicking through a website and fish or assessing the user experience and the user interface. Um, so that's where we are going right now. Uh, to our first teacher showcase, I'm very happy they are here. Um, Anton and Johan are from the Malmo University where they are lecturers in computer science and they teach a course called multi-platform web applications. And for this course, uh, they have used Selenium and Jest to upgrade the UI and the UX of submitted websites. Um, and Jest and Selenium are simply industry standard tools uh, that even CodeGrade internally uses to um, check or unit test our website every time we do a new release. And uh, they've used these to grade and in, a, in code grade. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to give the floor to Anton. I think you're going to start, right? Uh, I think you is going to start, but I'm going to start screen sharing when I get the OK from you. Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> you want, would you like to I'm use some words <laughs> before I begin? Yes, sir. So, Anton, the floor is, the floor is yours. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we've been using CodeGrade to uh, auto-grading web development uh, for our course. And uh, we're going to talk really quick about what is a course about, what are the assignments in the course, how do we uh, auto-grade the assignments, uh, how to validate HTML code, and you one will uh, end with uh, a short theme of how do we implement auto-grading in our course. Uh, so first, some quick words about the course. Uh, the course aims for the student to develop knowledge and skills to design web applications adapted for several types of devices with focus on mobile platforms. So basically, they will learn how to code HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build the websites that are targeting both uh, desktop, tablets, uh, mobile phones. So responsive websites, both with uh, external CSS frameworks and when they are writing all the code by themselves, but also some uh, interactive um, elements like uh, modifying the DOM, story information, local storage and cookies. They're using web APIs uh, and using devices hardware like the mobile phones, the GPS camera, etc. And this 
course is kind of up. Uh, we have like different modules in this course. So we have chosen uh, three assignments to show you today that are kind of um, representing the different modules. Uh, so we will first show you the assignments so you get a grasp of what are they supposed to do. And then we will show you how they are automatically graded. Uh, you feel free to jump in, you one if you want to add something. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah. So the first assignment we're going to uh, look at is how to build a responsive website. And the students are supposed to build something like this. As you can see, uh, a basic website that are made for the, the phone, the tablet, and the desktop the computer. Fairly simple. The second assignment we're going to look at is they are having, uh, they are going to build uh, a form that are there the users can search for movies, which are um, uh, received from a, a web API, uh, OMDB. So they should uh, take what the user input in the text field, uh, make a request to the web API, and uh, show the results for the user. And the third assignment is just a simple list of movies where they should add the title, the rating of the movie, uh, save the movie, and then after uh, they can sort the movies alphabetically or by rating. So this is kind of the assignments that we're going to look how we are autograding. So those assignments might seem pretty small, but we have designed a course with uh, multiple small assignments, which is easy to grade. And then in the end, they will do a bigger project where they will use all the concepts to create a, a bigger website. So over to you, Yuan. How do we do this? So we do this by using two tools, Selenium together with Jest. Uh, yeah, Anthony, if you would like to. There we go. So uh, the foundation of this is Jest. Jest is, Jest is a, a, a JavaScript uh, te testing framework. Uh, it uh, works on, on, on a pure JavaScript. There's no, there are no browsers involved in this step. Uh, but you can use it for things like uh, uh, talking to Mongo, MongoDB and stuff like that. If, we, if you would like to do that, it's quite, it's quite, 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 quite capable, actually. Uh, it is already available on CodeGrade using CG Jest, uh, which is where we actually started this whole thing, basically. Uh, it's quite feature rich, even though it's quite simple to work with. It is a zero config. However, if, uh, in order to, to, to make it work on CodeGrade, we, we had to do some minor tweaks, um, which I will kind of show you later on in the demo later on this, in this presentation. It's very, very framework, framework friendly, which is good for us in this course since we do want our, our, our students to, to not only use vanilla JS, but also things like Vue, React, and Angular, they, they, they choose a framework to work with, and this works with all of them. The uh, styles, uh, the style used by, uh, by Jest is a TDD test route. Uh, uh, so, so, sorry, um, yeah. So um, rather than using BDD, uh, where you uh, ask uh, the, uh, the uh, or, where you, uh, sorry, where you, where you, where you state in, in in your tests what you want the tests to 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 kind of be you. This is really really weird. I'm very sorry for this. Uh, no I'll do it again. I'm very sorry. <laughs> so the, uh, just use the TDD style uh, as, as assertions. So uh, expect mm -hmm to be and stuff like that, rather than using BDD, which is uh, which is uh, I want this to look like more storytelling. But there is, there is uh, support for that using Chai, which is really nice. So Anton, take the next one. Oh, beautiful. So then on top of this, we also use Selenium. Uh, Selenium is, is a tool used for uh, testing browsers, basically. But it can also be used for things like uh, and, uh, for, 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 for automating bo 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 boring browser interaction stuff, like uh, if you have to. Uh, to uh, fill in uh, your, your, your working hours every week. You can do that, this with Selenium quite nice. Uh, it has uh, a nice set of tools that, that's really, really useful for doing things like this. It has uh, a concept called web drivers where, where you kind of uh, 
hook uh, your JavaScript directly into a real browser. Uh, and for our things, we actually we are, we actually use Gecko, but you can also use things like Chromium and so on and Safari. Uh, but we've chosen to just go with Gecko for our tests. It also has a really nice browser-based IDE uh, where you can actually uh, record the tests that you want to do, uh, so that you actually don't really have to write any tests yourself. And as I said before, it it, it integrates quite well with Jest. So what we do in our tests is that we um, uh, we run a headless uh, window manager uh, on on on, a, an, on an X server on the on the uh, on the, uh, the on the virtual machine in in Code Red. So on to the next one. Yes. So what does it look like? So when we write a test. As you once said, we are writing a test that, that is uh, typed like should alert user if a title or rating is missing. So we're writing test and then we write code for targeting, in this case, the element with the ID save movie. We click uh, uh, on that button and then we expect things to happen. Uh, and to show you how this can be done, do you remember the first assignment, the responsive website? Here we are actually rendering, it goes fast. This is just to show what it looks like running the test uh, locally. So it loops. So if you, it's the same test going over and over again. So it opens up the browser. It looks at different elements. What are their CSS properties? Then we resize the window and we see, do the CSS properties uh, change as expected due to the viewport size? And if they do, they pass the test. And if they don't, they don't pass the test. The second assignment, remember the web API fetching movies. Here we have different test cases. First, we try out to only enter two characters in the search field, and then no search should be done. Uh, the next test is if there is more than two characters, we should search for movies and show the results in the list below. Uh, and also, we're testing that the list of movies should be reset when a new uh, API request is done. Uh, when you enter a new character and it's still over two characters in the search field. Uh, and every movie should, should show the title, um, the, the year and the poster of the movie. So as you can see, the field is filling up with different characters and removing characters and we see that we get the expected results. And the third test case was the movie list. So here we want to validate if the title is missing or the rating is missing. And then we want the, the browser to show an error message in an alert box in this case. Then we want to try if we can add a movie, remove a movie, and sort the movies. So this is what, what is happening when you're running this locally on a browser. But as you once said, when we do this on Code Gray, there's no browser popping up. Uh, it, uh, it goes automatically in the background, which is very neat. So I hope you get the. A, an understanding of what's going on when you do the testing. Uh, so you can see that we are, um, instead of me entering all the information all the time, see that things are working, we're doing this automatically, which is really nice. So many of you might want to know how this looks uh, on CodeGrade. So I recorded how it looks like. We're going to do uh, the last one, the last assignment, and submit it. Uh, and then CodeGray is uh, doing their magic uh, and running the tests. And after the test has been ran, you can see the, the results. And for this one, every uh, test passed. So yeah, th that's pretty much it. it. It's looked like it's not that much, but it, had, it has helped us a lot. We have over 60 students in this, this course, and I think we had eight assignments that we did uh, auto grading on. So it's, yeah, almost, yeah, how many is it? It's late in the evening, 480 assignments that we didn't have to grade by ourselves, which saved us a lot of time. Uh, Yuan, do you want to continue? Yeah, sure thing. We also, in another course, so Anton has, uh, we also looked into validating HTML with the HTML linter. The thing is that there is no real 
good HTML inter. So Anton, thank you. Uh, so we had to build our own basically. We did this using a tool called, uh, next one, HTML tidy. It's, a, it's an old tool, been used for many, many years, 25 years, uh, but, but it, it, it works well for what it does. It's a uh, rather simple uh, tool used to clean up uh, HTML documents. The thing is that it also gives feedback on, on exactly what it does. So what we do here is that we simply uh, uh, collect all of the feedback, we wrap that uh, into, into a, uh, a uh, small script that then, uh, um, that that then um, um, streams a, a a a set of of, of uh, test data back to 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 to, to code grade. So we can use this tidy as a linter. Uh, this also helped. Uh, there's no JavaScript involved in this, but for doing very basic uh, tests to see whether a a a HTML document is well formed or not, this is really really helpful. Yeah, I used this in the first web development course the students have. And before this, the first thing I did on every assignment was to see if the code validated. And if it didn't, I had to send the assignment back to the student because if it didn't validate, there were most likely a lot of more errors. So this was an easy way to say, uh, see that your code validates and then we will look at your code. So I've been asked how to, uh, to, to show to set up this run this on code grade. So of course I will do that. What I will do very first is that I will uh, I will use uh, the basis that I wrote, uh, which is freely available. So I will clone this. Oh, sorry. Uh, you want you have to share your screen. If I share my screen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, I realize what. Here we go. So I will start by 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 simply cloning this uh, this uh, uh, repo. Uh, so there we go. Uh, then what I will do, I'll show you what we have here. A set of files, nothing special. Um, you do see, you you do see my screen, right? Yes, yes, yes. Good, very good, good. So we have here a, a set of simple files. We have uh, the, 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 the package files used by NPM to install stuff. Uh, we have the uh, test, uh, the, 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 the file that we're going to test here, which is a demo test. We have two test files, three test files even. Oh, here we go, two. Uh, a very simple uh, config file, which I promised that I'll talk about. I have a, a wrapper script used to, to, to run stuff on, on, on a code grade and then to set up scripts. So first of all, the config file, um, I, I, I bragged before about how Jest is, uh, is a zero conf. However, we do need to uh, tell uh, Jest that we want to use the, the V8 engine, even though we're using uh, uh, Gecko, I, Firefox. For this, so this is uh, this is provided for you as well. You can use this, uh, and you can do whatever you want with this file, of course. Um, then we have this very simple uh, run run script. Um, where did it go? It disappeared. Here, here it is, of course, which will, will simply uh, open up a a a um, a uh, headless. Uh, Window Manager, where we will then run the uh, the Firefox installation. So Firefox does run on 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 uh, on a code grade, but you but you will never see it, of course. Then we have simple setup script. We will do all of that all, all all what you wanted to do, and a very simple setup uh, setup 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 script for students that will simply just just copy all the files files that you need. Then. We have a, uh, a, a test file, Selenium. Uh, first of all, you will need to define which uh, file you want to test. So I've, I've decided that, that all the tests that we're going to test there uh, is the one called index.html. Now you also have to change this one to, uh, to uh, where you uh, run a test, of course, this is predefined for running on code grade. Now for, for this thing that I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to uh, 
to try this out uh, locally to show you what's going on. Because I want to show you how to, how to write a test. So I will do it like this. Um, here we go. Uh, now, just to show you how this looks, uh, we have set of, uh, we have a set of uh, tests down here. Uh, and the, first of all, you do you have to install this whole test suite. It's very easily done and be um, installed. Takes half a minute. Nothing big. Uh, you will get uh, so, so some warnings with this one, uh, but I don't think it's anything bad because it's just a test. Uh, uh, a test uh, project, so it doesn't really matter. Now, in order to, to run a test, you simply run npm test. Spins up. Here you will see the, um, the uh, web browser starting up very soon. Might even be that be a bit fast, but you can't see it. it runs here on my computer. Yeah, here we go. Oh, gone, done. <laughs> here we go. So six to tests uh, in two test suites all passed. So what are those tests then? Well, first of all, I have two, two test suites in this one. First one is here. The second one is down here. Uh, and each test and each uh, test suite has, has uh, two tests in this one. So I am going to, to write a new one for you. So we will use the it command. It's basically the same thing as as the uh, Test is, is just another way of writing it. So I will write a very, a very stupid test. Uh, it should have uh, no apples in the banana element, which reminds me that I never showed you the HTML file. It's a very simple one. This is what it is. It has a P element called bananas, and it says I'm eating bananas. So it could have uh, no apple single banana element. Makes sense, right? So um, Selenium talks to, 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 to an, an, an external uh, application. So it has to run things uh, asynchronously. In order to, 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 to make this run well with, with, uh, with the jest, we have to write some, some, uh, some easy uh, Wrapper functions to make things easier, uh, but they run uh, in async mode. So you of course have to tell uh, just that. What we do here is that we 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 try to find an element um, and wait for this to be done before we do anything else. And we will use the uh, the gecko driver, which we define up here. Um, we do that. So um, where are you? here? So we use with Gek driver. Here you can across choose whichever you want. Gecko works very well for 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 this uh, this uh, environment though. And we use the bananas element again, where we don't want any any apples, right? And we want the the text element of this element. Um, uh, and we tell uh, just to 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 not have this uh, so um, if this file does contain this this text uh, we uh, we will fail however we know that it doesn't so we, but we will just test it. And here we go. That works fine, cool. So now all of that is taken care of. We know that it works. Now we want to, 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 to deploy this to, to code range. So I've, I've cheated. I have, I have a, a, a pre-built version here uh, so that we don't have to spend time building a VM later on. So what we will do a testing with Selenium guest. Here we go. And we will set up a um, 
very simple rubric. And then when it's done, we st we we start building our, our auto test. So first of all, we have to uh, to, to 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 send the correct files. It could be this one, the config file, the run file. The test files, what we want to use in this case, we only use Selenium test and the setup files. And then we send those up here, right? Submit. Don't forget to update the, the path. Oh, thank you, Anton. Thank you. <laughs> that's why we're, that, that's why we're, we're, we're both of us here. Let's take a test. Do that again. And now we tell uh, uh, code radar that we want to run this uh, uh, setup script. Submit that one. Run this one. Cool. Then, of course, we had a, a level here. Um, choose the rubric, which I always forget. Uh, run unit test. And we, for this, we use a custom one. Um, Uh, for this, we will write, let's see if I remember this. Um, ah, actually, I'm, going, I'm not going to do to be, to be doing something stupid, so I'll do this. I will copy from the documentation. So run, CG guest, run tests. Uh, go. You didn't move run yet to the directory, so it should be fixture. Right? What? No, this should work. I hope so. <laughs> we, you we did it, oh, of course, you do it in the setup student script. Yeah, sorry. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. So now this is all, all done. We will start, and this will build take will take forever, as you know, a short while. So we go back to the um, to the pre-built one. It's the same setup. Nothing changed here, um, and let's test this. We will take the index.html file, we will run it, and we will submit it. And here we go. It's always fun. <laughs> yes. And just one thing I wanted to note is that uh, the building part is cached now. So, um... Every time you you only have to build it once, and then after that, it should work quickly. Yeah, I'm setting up again. Okay, this is what I kind of wanted to avoid when I did this pre-built one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. It's a bit slow, but then again, it is running a, a real browser live. So, uh, yeah. but today it's really slow. It doesn't. It's not usually this slow. Here we go. And each test shows up as a as a test as it should. And there we go. Anton, back to you. Yes, uh, and. Links uh, as you want to use there. We, there's uh, a link for yes, a link for Selenium, a link for HTML tidy, and the uh, UN code grade guides. And if you don't have something to add, you want that was all from us. I hope you could see how useful this was for us, how many hours we have saved, 
uh, and how we're going to continue building uh, hopefully even better tests the next uh, time the course is given. Yeah. So Beautiful. Thank, thank you very much for this tool, Codegrade. It helped. Us <laughs> thank, you, thank you, guys. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, thank you very much. Uh, so I, I shared uh, Johan's GitHub uh, in the chat. So if you want to look at that, you can do that. Um, all the files that he mentioned are available there. Uh, and for people that are watching the video, I will uh, make sure to have a link to the GitHub page uh, in the description as well. So you can find it there. Thank you guys very much. Uh, that was really clear. And uh, it's an awesome thing you guys did there. Um, I'll now quickly go over some other things. I'm not sure if we have time to cover everything, um, but since we already have an SQL and a MySQL guide uh, in our blog, uh, I'll, I'll try to cover JavaScript for sure and then see if we have time left for SQL. Um, so uh, JavaScript, of course, is a scripting language that is often taught in web dev courses. And um, JavaScript scripts can be run really easily in CodeGrade. Um, to run them, of course, without a browser, you need something called a JavaScript shell. Um, in CodeGrade, we have Node.js pre-installed, and you can use that. Um, next to that, um, CodeGrade also includes other things for JavaScript specifically. Uh, so you can um, use ESLint as a linter in the code quality step for JavaScript. And we have the unit testing frameworks, Jest and Mocha. Uh, and of course, Jest was just used uh, for Selenium as well. Mocha is very similar to Jest. Now, there's a couple of ways you can upgrade uh, JavaScript, starting with very simple IO tests. And this is very basic. Um, let's say... We uh, have an iseven.js file, and this takes as an argument um, a number and then prints even or out depending on the number. And it handles incorrect input by printing please input a number. And uh, we will use node.js and the IO test to automatically create this assignment. This is what it looks like. So we have iseven um, defined here as a function, and then we get the argument from the students. Um, so what we do with that is we create a very easy IO test and there is no need for any setup in CodeGrade. Everything is pre-installed and we use Node, as I mentioned before, to run the JavaScript without a browser. And in this case, we just type in Node is even. This is the file that the student has handed in. And um, after that, we can give an input argument and we expect, of course, then the output to be even in this case. We can make more input and output pairs here so we can give other arguments and we can expect other outputs there um, as many as we wish. So as you can see, the basics of JavaScript autograding are very similar to, let's say, Python autograding. Both are scripting languages, no need for compilation. Uh, we just run the code and we give the input and see if the output is as expected. Um, now there's a couple of tools that make autograding JavaScript a little bit easier that are built into CodeGrade. Um, we have ESLint built in, and that is a tool that statically analyzes your JavaScript code uh, to find common problems and mistakes. Um, to do again the Python analogy, this is something like Flake 8 or PyLint, for instance. Um, so ESLint is uh, designed to be very flexible. It is easy. Um, to design your own configuration file to tell ESLint exactly which uh, errors and mistakes it should uh, uh, tell you about. Um, and it even has the option to add totally custom rules. This is a little bit of advanced stuff, uh, but if you want, uh, there is the option there. So you can really parse the code how you want it and um, automatically check very specific things in JavaScript. It is built into CodeGrade's code quality step, so it should be very easy to use there. As you can see right here, we have a code quality step set up and as configuration file, we just give in this case, a standard configuration file, which is a JSON file, just downloaded this from the ESLint website, uploaded this as a fixture, and I access it in the fixtures folder 
right here. And now as extra arguments here, I give um, this blob with .js after it. So it will parse or run ESLint over all the JavaScript files in the um, student submission, regardless of in which directory they are. So again, very simple stuff. Uh, to use ESLint, all we have to do is upload a configuration file, which can be, again, the standard one that you download on the internet or a custom one, and uh, the rest will work automatically. Now, for unit testing JavaScript, uh, we just had a great explanation of Jest and how that works. Um, of course, Selenium is uh, a external library that works together with Jest. Uh, that's why I thought I would use Maka. And as Maka describes themselves, they are a simple, flexible, and fun JavaScript testing framework. Uh, fun it is, definitely. Um, and again, just like uh, Anton or Joa mentioned, uh, popular extensions like Chai work for Maka as well, which make it a little bit more user-friendly. Uh, another extension I'll talk about briefly later is Rewire. That is a very useful extension, I think. Um, both Maka and Jest are both built into CodeGrade's unit test step. Um, so it's kind of up to you which one you prefer to use. So to uh, start auto grading in CodeGrade, um, you can set up basic simple unit tests. And there's kind of two ways to do it. And I would like to point that out uh, because while I was figuring this out for the first time some time ago, I did have some troubles with this to understand it. Uh, but Basically, of course, a function has to be exported if you're using Node, since all the functions in JavaScript, if you're using Node, are uh, private by default. Um, so if you want it to be accessible outside of the file itself, which you need to because you have an external testing file um, or script, you will have to export the function. And as I will show you right here, I'll go to this course and I have a JavaScript is even function uh, or is even. And if we do it like that, we have to ask the student or we have to give them a template or we have to ask the student to export um, the or the function that you want to assess. In this case, we want them to export and let me make this a little bit bigger for you. Uh, we want them to export the is even function so that my testing file can then check the is even function itself. And in our, my testing file right here, test.js, I simply do that by requiring the is even function from the is even file. So here I want the student to export it. Uh, of course, this is an option. This is the easiest way um, for you as a teacher, but it may not be the easiest way for a student since this is a little bit more error prone as if the student um, forgets to export the function, then your tests will fail with an error that's not too user-friendly for a student. Um, so to uh, counter that, what you can use is a library called Rewire. Um, this is a simple NPM package that you can install using NPM install dash G Rewire in your global setup script. And what Rewire allows you to do is even access uh, private anonymous functions. And uh, the code that I use for that is very simple. I simply require rewire first, then I open the app using rewire. So uh, and with the app, I mean, of course, the submitted JavaScript of the user, again, is even.js. And then using rewires, a get function, I can get access to the is even, even if it's not export. And then it looks like this. Go back here, go and I go here. Um, as we can see right here, the student uploaded is even, but without the uh, export here. Um, but as we can see right here, the test still passes and still uh, evaluates the is even function. And that is because in our global setup script, we installed rewire and in our test, we added or we required rewire and we opened the student file using rewire and used the get function to get their function. Um, so these are two ways to do auto grading uh, or unit testing for JavaScript. It's either way is fine, of course, depending on how you set up your assignment, uh, but it's good to know about this to save you from headaches 
um, or potential headaches. Um, again, rewire, I show it here now in Mocha for the only reason that uh, Anton and Johan just mentioned Jest already. Uh, rewire is also available for Jest. Uh, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, I see uh, Johan nodding, so I trust him completely in there. Um, so this is not Maka specific. This is also available for Jest, and everything should work the same. Yeah, of course, Rewire is available for Jest as well because it's totally different library. Uh, but oh well. Um, I think I have some time left for SQL, so I just want to cover uh, some basics here. Um, of course, databases are a key element of web dev and even often are taught in a separate course. Um, basically, SQL is really easy to auto-grade inside CodeGrade. Uh, you can install any SQL or no SQL software on CodeGrade. Um, and we have guides available for both SQLite and MySQL, where we show you exactly how you can install them. Um, and installation of these tools will be cached, of course. Um, testing SQL is really straightforward. Um, since you can ask your students to hand in one .sql file per query or per subtask, um, which is a very convenient way to then uh, have an I/O test, which uh, checks all of these queries individually and see if they output the right things. Uh, and how you can set it up? Uh, a quick comparison first between MySQL and SQLite. Um, so the reason why I first recommended SQLite is since it has a serverless database approach, meaning you do not need to run and set up a server. Um, and that makes it really quick and very easy to install and use inside Autotest. It is a little bit less flexible though. MySQL, however, is the industry, industry standard SQL tool. It is taught by many uh, computer science faculties and, uh, but it does require a server for running tests. Um, nowadays though, that doesn't matter that much anymore since you can simply cache the installation of that inside CodeGrade. Um, also all the setup of MySQL uh, is a little bit more complicated, but I've written scripts for all of that, which you can find in our blog. So you can just copy and paste them and that will make your life very easy. So in the end, both of these are the same uh, difficulty level. Um, so just choose the one that you are most comfortable with. Now, I will give you a very quick example of SQLite. Um, so again, we can simply install it in the global setup script using apt, so sudo apt install dash y uh, SQLite tree. And after we've done that, it simply becomes available in our whole environment. Then since it is a serverless approach, we can simply upload our database file as a fixture, uh, which I show you right here, upload the Chinook database. Um, I talk about this in, uh, oh, can you guys still see my screen? Great, all right. Um, so I talked about this in the blog as well. Uh, for this example, I also use the Chinook database which is an open source database, uh, which represents an online music store. And uh, I think is a very student friendly example database. It is available in most database formats. So if you're using MySQL, SQLite, you can use exactly the same database, uh, which makes it very easy as well. If you are teaching multiple database systems throughout your course and you want to have the same database for all of them. Um, so now after you've installed SQLite and you have uploaded the Chinook or your database file as a fixture, it is very easy to now create your IO test. You simply run SQLite tree, which has been installed. Uh, you select the database that you've uploaded in your fixtures. And now you can simply check all of the queries that the student has handed in. Um, so in this case, they handed in a query called songs from Hendrix. Uh, which lists all the songs from Jimi Hendrix and the expected output, as we can see right here, is a list of his songs. Um, if your student uploads multiple SQL files, you can of course have a input and output pair per SQL file or per query of the task, um, which makes it very convenient and very straightforward to use. In this case, I use the, uh, well, I don't even know what this character is called, uh, to um, 
to redirect the content of the uh, songs from Hendrix SQL file to the SQLite. And as I put this in the input arguments field right here, this will be appended after this query. So um, if you would do this locally, you would type in SQLite, Chinook, SQL, light, and then um, this bracket, uh, which inputs these songs from Hendrix SQL. All right. Um, so before we finish, I would like to mention why we didn't talk about PHP today. Um, PHP does work on code grade, uh, but since we see that in practice, most uh, computer science uh, courses do not use PHP anymore. Uh, some do, of course, but also a lot of them switch to other backend solutions like Python, JavaScript, and Ruby. Uh, I've decided not to cover this. Um, it does, however, work in CodeGrade and it works really easily inside CodeGrade. Uh, PHP is uh, or, or can be installed inside other tests and you can simply run it very easily, your PHP scripts in other tests or in IO tests. Uh, and there's even a unit test framework for PHP that is pre-installed inside CodeGrade, uh, which is called PHP unit. So that is already out of the box installed inside CodeGrade and you can use it right away. Um, we do have experience with PHP inside CodeGrade. There are many teachers that do use PHP inside CodeGrade. So if you want more help um, to use PHP and to autograde it inside CodeGrade, just reach out to us and we're happy to help. All right, so to quickly summarize what we talked about today, first of all, how we can officially grade web dev assignments inside CodeGrade. Uh, and afterwards, uh, Johan and Anton showed how you can use Selenium to auto grade that inside the CodeGrade as well. Um, next to that, also quickly mentioned how you can auto grade GS, so JavaScript with IO tests, unit tests, and code quality tests and how you can install SQL or no SQL software to auto grade queries. Uh, I would also like to thank Johan and Anton for setting up this Selenium uh, example inside CodeGrade in the first place, uh, but also being here and putting in the effort and time to share their experience with all of us. Um, I do hope that it, well, it inspired us, of course, uh, but I do hope it also inspires all the other teachers um, to experiment inside CodeGrade, try to use different tools, uh, because as you can see, um, it is not actually that hard and it's very well possible to use a lot of other tools inside CodeGrade and that will make your teaching life way easier. So thank you very much, Johan and Anton. Uh, I'm really happy you guys were here. So that was it. Um, if there's no more questions, uh, Sam, then I think we will wrap up the recording. And of course, we'll hang in um, for any more questions in the Q&A after this. Yep, uh, at the moment, no, there haven't been any questions in the chat, so uh, we can wrap up. Beautiful, well, thank you very much again, Johan and Anton, and uh, thank you for being here today.